Lissa Productions. Welcome back to Experimental Physics and our series of experiments involving radioactivity. In this experiment, we will determine the dependence on distance of the intensity of gamma radiation. So we'll measure the number of counts of gamma particles as a function of distance from a point source. And the objective of the experiment is to show by some quantitative means that the dependence shows an inverse square relationship on distance. So we'll measure the background radiation, no source presence, just measure the naturally occurring radiation and correct all of your data for the presence of background. Um, measure the number of counts as a function of distance from the source and uh, then do some sort of appropriate plot and analysis to demonstrate the inverse square dependence. What we'll do is, first of all, uh, set up the Geiger counter to the appropriate voltage. So just a reminder that the power switch is on the back of the unit. Press the red power button and then set the proper operating voltage using the display select function. So we'll set this down to high voltage. And I'm just going to set this to 900 volts using the up button until we reach 900 volts. And then press display select again and set the time interval to 60 seconds or 100 seconds or whatever a convenient time interval will be. And then again pressing the select function until we get back to the count function. So we'll reset whatever's in the display and do an independent measurement of the background radiation first. It's a good idea to do a background measurement at the beginning and at the end of the experiment just to check to be sure that the background hasn't changed significantly. So measure background and record that information. Then what we can do is carefully remove the tube from its stand and place the tube at the end of a meter stick. You can do this in one of two ways. Either set the tube carefully face down on its window like this with the edge of the meter stick right at the uh, middle of the tube and then place the radioactive source at various distances along the meter stick, something like this. And maybe place something to keep it from rolling off the table. That would be useful. So you carefully measure the distance from the tube to the source. Just a word of caution, these tubes have extremely fragile windows on the end. And if you poke that window with a finger or a pen or with the end of the meter stick, you can fracture the window and that will destroy the tube as seen here with this one that's completely dead. So what you see there is the bare wire inside the metal cylinder of the tube. So be careful not to fracture that window where the tube is destroyed. Another possible way of doing this is to place the tube on its side on the table and arrange the edge of the meter stick to be again right at the center of the tube like this and move the source to various distances. The reason for using the side of the tube, the Geiger tube is a metal cylinder and the metal cylinder will block all of the beta particles from the source. That will ensure that you are counting only gamma radiation and not beta particles. The dependence on distance for beta radiation is very different and much more complex. So you want to filter out the beta particles and an easy way of doing that is to have the side of the tube facing the source. Um, so that ensures that you're measuring from the axis of the tube to the center of the radioactive material. So gather enough data from various distances uh, on out to about a meter away and plot the data that you measure corrected for background radiation and demonstrate that the dependence on distance is inverse square. So as always, I'd like to remind you to keep your exposure to radiation as low as reasonably achievable. And the three common sense ways of doing that are to maintain proper distance. Uh, don't be any closer to the source than you absolutely need to be in order to do the work. 
work efficiently to minimize the time of exposure. So do your work, plan what you're doing ahead of time, do it quickly and efficiently, and return the source to your instructor as soon as you are finished. And finally, if you need to be near the source for a prolonged period of time, make sure that there is some sort of shielding between your body and the source of radiation so that the shielding material absorbs the radiation rather than you. So keep your exposure to radiation as low as reasonably achievable when doing all of these experiments.